Hi, my name is Sam Woods. I'm a guide for Tropical Birding Tours. I've been with them for about 15 years and of those years, about 13 of them have been visiting birding in Australia, which remains solidly within the top three of my top five destinations. Um, so um, why is it so good? Well, Australia in general provides very easy birding. Uh, when you go after many of the targets, you get many of them. And it's also really good photography. It's probably one of the most underrated places for photography in the world. So now onto this particular tour. We're talking about here, Australia's top end, Victoria River to Kakadu. This is a nine day tour. It's short so that you can add it onto our Eastern Australia tour to complement that, which runs after this one. Or it can be taken as a standalone tour if you've already done, done that side and you want to go after some of the specialties of this region. In general, if you compare the two, um, this tour will add you that we go after about 30 specialties of the sort of northern Australia that you wouldn't go after on the eastern Australia tour. And we typically add about 50 species uh, that you wouldn't get on that tour. This can also be taken as a standalone tour if you've done that area and you want to go after the specialties here. And it's quite easy to add on to say a trip to Ayers Rock if you're doing that as a tourist thing and you want to add on some birding onto that. So before I leave this slide, I want to show you some of the specialties here that I've uh, got on the front slide. We've got Rainbow Pitter on the upper left. In the middle, we've got Purple Crown Fairy Wren. And then on the upper right, we've got the gorgeous Gordian Finch, one of the undoubted most wanted birds on this trip. Then on the lower left, we've got a cartoon bird, the Spinifex Pigeon, a hooded parrot in the middle, and then the bird glaring at us is Partridge Pigeon, very much a Northern Australia specialty. And then on the far right, we've just got an image of a giant termite mound that uh, dots the dominant landscape there. And below that, we've got the Northern Territory flag. This is the Australian flag here on this screen. So to be clear, this nine day tour, the entire tour, is spent in that orange zone, the Northern Territory. This is an area that's twice the size of the US state of Texas, but only has 200,000 people living in it. So it's very underpopulated. It's the most underpopulated region of uh, Australia and one of the most beautiful. Um, so it's a really interesting place to visit. And quite often you're on your own, um, birding in the middle of nowhere. And, and that's really interesting. So, so the top end, what is the top end? Well, Australians tend to describe things very literally. So the top end is quite literally the top end of the Northern Territory. Um, on this tour, that refers to what's in that re red rectangle there. The tour comes in and out of Darwin. So the arrival day starts in Darwin and you leave out of Darwin, whether you go home or whether you join our Eastern Australia tour that follows after this. So yeah. Now, even though I've made the point that it's very underpopulated and you're going to areas where there's very few people, one of the nice things about Australia is, is the road system is excellent. So in this region, you often see these road, what they call road trains. This has three carriages on it, I believe. Um, some of them go up to four. And the reason why these giant vehicles can travel across uh, these remote parts of Australia is because they have largely paved, flat, wide, easy roads. So that makes our trip traveling around very easy too. And this is a sunset in the same area, Victoria River. And I just wanted to talk about this trip having multiple habitats as two. So um, while uh, there's the tropical area around Darwin, which has monsoon forest, it has mangroves, has mud flats. Um, when we get into the outback, we're predominantly birding in this sort of stuff, which is like tropical savanna, which is dominated by eucalyptus trees and interspersed with thick sort of a, a thick grassy understory. And the other thing we do is we go into sandstone escarpment areas, which are very critical for some species on this trip too. And this is an incredibly scenic trip, and I hope this gives you the idea of that. Um, you'll have your smartphone out a lot to take photographs on this trip. Another appeal here is we go to Kakadu later on the trip and we visit some ancient or Aboriginal rock art sites. Some of these are just a few hundred years old and some are said to date back as far as 20,000 years old, which is hard to conceive of really. And the beauty of those rock art sites is they're right by excellent birding areas. So another thing that happens when you come to Australia is you see a lot of interesting bird families which are not very familiar, particularly if you've never been there before. There are many families that are endemic to the region, the Australasian region, like the Australasian tree creepers here, pictured with a black-tailed tree creeper, which is one of the specialties on this tour. 
Here's something that looks kind of nuthatch-like, but it's not. It's a Satella, which is kind of like the Australasian version of that. Uh, this is an interesting bird, the black butcher bird. This is very much a tropical northern species and has an interesting call, which I'll play to you in a minute. It's now considered to be in the same group as wood swallows and, um, and things like Australian magpie. So it's, uh, it's kind of a varied group, really. Um, here, for your enjoyment, is the call of the black butcher bird. So moving on, another family that's uh, interesting in Australia is the Australasian robins. Here are represented by another specialty of this tour, the buff-sided robin. And this is a wood swallow, related apparently now in the same family as the butcher bird, hard to believe, but, uh, but it is. Um, and here's some pseudo babblers, this is grey crown babbler. And then in the lower right we've got the apostle bird, named after the fact it supposedly hangs around in groups of 12. And lastly, on the family note, we've got the pardalets, represented here by one of the specialties of this particular trip, rarely seen on a recent trip, the red-browed pardalet. And I shouldn't go anywhere without mentioning the fact that Australia is known as the land of parrots. And uh, even though this isn't the most parrot-rich part of the trip, these are all very easy to come by. We've got a red-collared lorikeet on the top left, galar on the top right, little corella on the bottom left, and then a red-winged parrot on the bottom right. So even, even some of the, what I should say about Australia is some of the commonest birds, for example, the top two there are some of the commonest birds in the top end on this trip, are parrots. So it's a pretty cool uh, country, Australia, when parrots are your common birds. And of course, we can look for other animals there too. This is the famous salty or saltwater crocodile. Um, there's a good reason why we don't go bathing in random pools on this trip. That sign should say everything. And then we've got mammals too, of course. We have uh, giant um, flying bats, fruit-eating bats called black flying foxes. And then we have red, ca red kangaroos on the right. And we also have a chance to see agile wallabies and antilopine wallaroo as well. So a combination of interesting uh, habitats, interesting scenery, great mammals, and some top-end specialty birds are some of the appeals of this trip. And here we go. So. The tour, nine day tour, starts and ends in Darwin, so you fly into Darwin. Day one, we fly into Darwin, and then we spend the afternoon birding around Darwin. So as I say, the, the arrival day, day one, we actually do birding in the afternoon in Darwin, so typically people arrive uh, the day before that, get some rest time in the morning, and then we meet up for lunch, and then go out birding around Darwin. Darwin is an incredibly birdy city. It has mangroves, it has um, tropical savanna, it has wetland areas, um, it has tidal mudflats with thousands of shorebirds, um, and it has good night birding too, so it really is a cool place to start the trip off. Um, usually the places we visit around Darwin, it, the, the order varies depending on what's going on. We usually go to places like Buffalo Creek where there's mangroves, um, we go to the botanical gardens where you get some uh, tropical species, some widespread tropical species, and then we also visit um, some wetland areas around there too. So, so typically we have quite a bit of varied birding right around Darwin. Um, the Botanical Gardens are a great place to catch up with this bird. This is one of those strange Australasian slash Asian families you may not be familiar with called the Megapodes. This orange-footed scrub fowl is within the family of the Megapodes and what they do is with their giant feet you can see there, they they build a giant earth mound and then lay their eggs within the earth mound and let the the tropical soil self incubate the eggs so they just they lay the eggs and then they leave and that's their parenting duties done the chicks hatch and they're self-dependent from the word go so that's the megapodes uh, represented here by the orange fruited scrub fowl sometimes in the botanical garden there's a roosting pair of rufous owls rufous owl if you look at the range map you might look at it and think oh you can get that anywhere um, there's many people who've thought that and failed. <laughs> um, it's a bird that's very rarely seen, but the Botanical Garden of Darwin is probably one of the best places to find it. Uh, a bit more of a common species around Darwin is the uh, Australasian fig bird, part of the Oriole family. 
And so I wanted to show you here, this is a clip of the uh, beach flats and flats on Buffalo Creek. This is only like 10 minutes from our hotel. And typically you get thousands of shorebirds off here with Terex sandpipers, Far Eastern curlews, uh, greater and lesser sand plovers, red cap plovers. Um, so lots of Asian uh, shorebirds, uh, Great Knot, another one. So if you're looking for a big hit of shorebirds, this is a great thing to do on one of the first days. And this is bordered by mangroves where you often get this shorebird, the beach thickney. And the mangroves themselves have a series of specialty birds like this red-headed honeyeater. Honeyeaters are the most dominant songbird family in Australia with well over 70 species. Um, so you'll see a lot on any Australian trip, which may be the first time you've encountered that family. And the mangroves are also home to this much rarer bird, the chestnut rail. Other mangrove specialties in Darwin include white-breasted whistler, um, mangrove golden whistler, mangrove grey fantail, and yellow white eye. So it's a good place to go for some specialty birds. And you also get Teresian kingfisher there on the left. And also common around Darwin is a, a very similar forest kingfisher. So in a day around Darwin, we very typically pick up both of these kingfisher species. And rainbow beet is also a very pleasant sight around Darwin, frequently seen. And then the hotel, as I say, the hotel is nicely placed to go out for some local night birds. And this is all within a 10 minute drive of the hotel. We frequently get Australian owl at night jar. Um, this is where a new family for many people. It's kind of like a cross between an owlet, an owl I should say, and a night jar, hence the name. Um, quite a widespread species, but very nice to see. And then this is the, one of the other night birds that's regularly seen near the hotel is the barking owl. Barking owl is far more regularly seen in the top end than it is in our Eastern Australia trip where it's quite rare. Um, another nocturnal species we could see in the same area is a large-tailed nightjar, another species that's rare on the Eastern trip. Now barking owl, you're probably wondering why it's called barking owl. This is another good, good um, method of Australians naming things for what exactly they're about and so take a listen to this call it's pretty strange and I, I honestly swear to you when you hear this in the distance you can actually question yourself as to whether it's a, a pack of dogs or is it actually a barking owl so let's listen up for that Okay, so now we're on to day two. The afternoon of day one spent birding in Darwin, and similarly on the morning of day two, we spend a bit of time in Darwin. Um, from there, we go about 40 minutes to Fog Dam, which is a wetland area surrounded by monsoon forest. And we make our way eventually to Catherine, which is 200 miles southeast of Darwin, about three and a half hours in a car. But we spend all day getting there because we make the stops at Fog Dam, and then also Pine Creek, about an hour north of Catherine. So Fog Dam. Um, while we look for the wetland birds like royal spoonbills and magpie geese and rajah shell ducks, green pygmy geese on the wetlands, a major focus is the monsoon forest around the edge, which has birds like this rose crown fruit dove, uh, lemon bellied flycatcher, which is actually a kind of Australasian robin, hence it's sometimes called lemon bellied fly robin, which is all kind of confusing. But the rarest, or the, uh, not the rarest, but the most gorgeous bird we're looking for there is the rainbow pitter, one of the real top birds of the tour. And so it's nice to get that on the second day of the trip normally. Other birds we can get in there are like things like grey whistler, arafura fantail, um, and other specialties at the top end like that. Um, nearer the actual wetland, you've got a paper bark swamp, and this is a bird that's uh, aptly named the paper bark flycatcher. It's actually not restricted to paper box exclusively, and we should see it a lot on this trip, but it is very much a northern specialty not found on the Eastern Australia trip. And then we head off from there and we drive down southeast towards Catherine and towards Pine Creek, our next stop. And while we're driving, we'll be on the lookout for any birds we come by like this black uh, cockatoo. This is a specifically called the red-tailed black cockatoo, these giant cockatoo species. So as we're driving, we're driving through habitat all the way, so we, it's not uncommon for us to make stops as we go through for various parrots, honey eaters. We kind of just listen out for activity and pull over when we hear it. 
And then we get to Pine Creek. Pine Creek is a tiny settlement, um, which only has one motel uh, and one store, and otherwise it's pretty small and pretty, um, not much on the map, but for birders it's a major, major stop stopover. It's the major place to find the hooded parrot, one of the key species in the area, which I'll show you later. But it's also this, got this cool um, sort of tap in town, and, and when you turn it on, birds come in like the red collared lorikeets here. This is a great bower bird. Great bower birds are very common on this trip, and we can often find their bowers like this. Uh, the bowers are an area where the males come to dance for females. It's not a nest site, more kind of like a display area for a male to attract females, both with his pretty simple dance and his collection of goodies. Um, so great bowerbirds typically collect things that are silvery and grey, um, but sometimes they have bits of green thrown in and sometimes bits of um, red too. Um, and they'll collect anything, it doesn't matter whether it's a natural item or not. I saw one great bowerbird once, a uh, bower that had a tiny little grey, silver grey toy grenade in it, which was kind of interesting. And this is another one of the common birds of uh, the Northern Territory and Australia in general, actually, the magpie lark, which is actually a giant monarch flycatcher that mainly sits on the ground, which is very unusual for that family. So it's a bit of an oddball, but a very common species. Honey eaters are going to feature heavily on this tour, as I said before. It's one of the dominant bird groups in Australia. And this is one of the dominant species and abundant species on this trip, the blue faced honey eater. And this is also another kind of honey eater, but one that uh, we don't see on the Eastern Australia trip, one of the sort of Northern Australia specialties, the silver crowned friar bird. So that takes us to Catherine for the night. Okay, so the end of day two, we've arrived in Catherine, spend the night there. And then day three is all about going from Catherine to Timber Creek, and usually making a stop in Victoria River on the way. That journey is about three hours, about 200 miles. Um, but first of all, in the morning, before breakfast, we usually go out to look for water holes around Catherine. Now, the thing about the, most of this trip is spent in the outback. This is actually the top of, the top part of the top end around Darwin, it's quite tropical. But now we've got down towards Catherine, it's kind of like into the outback. It's, it's known actually, Catherine, as where the outback meets the tropics. And this is very typical of the outback here, with tropical savannah behind the pond here, which is like a, a scattered area of eucalypt wooded area with lots of uh, understory of grass. Now what we're looking for is water holes. Because it's so dry in this time of year, we visit in the driest part of the dry season for this reason, so that water holes are few and far between. So the few that are remaining are hot spots for birds. And particularly on this trip, we're looking for finches. The top end of Australia is the finch capital of Australia with 10 different species possible on this trip alone, which is kind of ridiculous. And this is the very, the sort of holy grail of that group of 10, the Gordian finch. Um, around, I should say that a lot of these birds are nomadic. So some years there might be hundreds in one place and then the next year there may be none in the same place. So we have to keep an eye on things as guides, do our research. And um, usually there's some water holes around Catherine that are usually good, but it's very important to be there early in the morning because that's when the birds typically come. You can go to these pools at the wrong time of day and think you're in the wrong place entirely. You're just not, you're not, you're just there at the wrong time entirely. So early in the morning is typically best. So we usually do this pre-breakfast and then return to Catherine for breakfast and then make our way towards Timber Creek. So around these water holes, we've also got chance of other finches as well as other birds. This is a zebra finch. This is a chestnut breasted moonia, also a kind of finch. And this is the crimson finch, particularly common in the Northern Territory. But the pools attract other birds too, like diamond doves, night herons sometimes, other herons. Uh, can attract parrots. One time we had 60 hooded parrots coming out of nowhere. Um, cockatoos also. So it's, uh, it's really cool. And they're surrounded by tropical savannah, which has birds like this very totella. Um, this is a mistletoe bird, which is a kind of flower pecker, a family you find in Asia and Australasia. And then we move on to Victoria River. So Victoria River is a couple of hours drive away. Um, so we've done the water holes around Catherine, we've had our breakfast, and then we drive on to Victoria River. And Victoria River is interesting because it's got tropical savannah, which is pretty much what you can see most of there. The, tree, the wooded area is tropical savannah, the dominant outback habitat. And then you can see there's a ridge on the far left, that's a sandstone escarpment. And on the bottom right you've got people walking up to that. 
One of the specialties of Victoria River is white quilled rock pigeon, which requires a walk up to this sandstone escarpment, which we can either do on this day, but we typically do it on another day when it's a bit cooler. But irrespective of that, we often look for this bird on the way through Victoria River because we can't resist it. Uh, fairy wrens are this amazing little group of wrens uh, in Australia. Uh, and this is a particular specialty of Northern Australia, the purple crown fairy wren. And the, this is its habitat you can see in the photograph, this sort of pale um, yellowish cane grass, which lines the Victoria River, which is a big river there. And there's also a roadhouse there, which is quite, it makes a nice stopover. Um, here's some more pictures around Victoria River. We've got a common cockatoo here called a galah. And then we've got sand, a bit of sandstone escarpment there on the right that you can see when you walk up for the white quilled rock pigeon. So Victoria River is a really neat place to stop because it's the first place with uh, alcohol, good food for, a, for quite a few miles. And it's also got some nice sprinklers out and wet areas that brings in birds like this galah and things like blue winged kookaburra often come in. And the habitat around there also provides habitat for northern rosella, a kind of parrot, and black chinned honey eater which is a particular form in the uh, top end, which is known as golden backed honey, so which might end up being considered a separate species. If you see it's got that golden color there, that's completely lacking in the much dingier version you see on the Eastern tour. So at the end of day three, we've checked into the Timber Creek and the whole of day four we spend in the Timber Creek area before moving on to Top Springs for a single night. So we have two nights Timber Creek and then a single night in Top Springs. And they're basically looking for similar birds. So whatever we don't see on day four around Timber Creek, we, we drive down towards Top Springs looking for those same birds on the, on the journey. So usually we start our day out in Timber Creek by driving out to see if we can see any water holes. Birds like cockatiels are regular at those water holes. And another native bird of Australia that's a popular cage bird is the budgerigar. This is a classic nomadic species. Some years you can have hundreds in one spot. This was taken where we were watching about 300 in a spot near Timber Creek. But in another year, you may not have any in the same spot because they move around in relation to local water levels. So these are unpredictable, non-seasonal movements. It's nomadism. And I should say that the budgerigars do not come in pink, do not come in blue in the native environment. They're always green and yellow like this, and that's just fine by me. Uh, I said that Australia is land of parrots, and this is one of the common ones on this trip, the red-winged parrot, particularly stunning in flight. And then we'll be looking on the dirt verges at the side of rows to try and find this bird, the spinifex pigeon, something that looks like it was out of Alice in Wonderland, frankly. One of the excellent areas to see that bird is in areas where you find these trees, which are famous around Timber Creek. They're called boab trees. They're a native Australian tree endemic to Australia. So even though Timber Creek's a tiny settlement of 250 people and one significant motel for us with, with plenty of good beer on tap, um, it's one of the things it's famous for is this tree. And one of the common birds on this trip in general that we often found around Tim Timber Creek as well is the blue wing kookaburra. This is very common in this area. It's not the kookaburra that the song was made for, that's the laughing kookaburra. And if you watch my Eastern tour, virtual tour, you'll, you'll see a bit more about that on there. But I would like to play the call of the blue and kookaburra because it reaches scales of ugliness I've never seen before. So over to the blue and kookaburra. Turn the volume down. So we've now done two nights at Timber Creek and a single night at Top Springs and then we work our way back north towards Kakadu um, but we don't get into Kakadu yet we go to the town of Pine Creek. If you remember on the way to Catherine we passed through it before but we passed through it again one because it's a great little town to stay in, tiny little town. Um, the journey there is good for looking for birds like redback kingfisher in the tropical savannah. Other birds we could see in the tropical savannah on the way include things like red-browed pardalote little wood swallow, 
Um, in the creeks, we could find things like varied lorikeet, so we and black-tailed tree creeper, or even northern shrike tit, which is one of the rarest birds of the trip. So we make a number of stops as we head our way north, but we make sure we spend uh, a bit of time around Pine Creek at the end of the day, which is when hooded parrots become most active. Pine Creek, tiny place with one tavern and one hotel, which is great, we stay in it. Um, and the tavern's a good place to hang out and look for this bird, which is good for us. Um, so they often around the tavern because there's a nice tap there that brings in all kinds of birds and sometimes brings in the hooded parrot itself. This is literally the epicenter of hooded parrot, of the hooded parrot population. Um, it's the best place. So that's what we do at the end of that day uh, before spending the night in Pine Creek. So we spent the night at Pine Creek, which was good to get the hooded parrot, get that in the bag. And the other reason why Pine Creek was a good place to spend the night away from the hooded parrot reason is because you're now only within 60 kilometers, 40 miles, about 45 minutes dry of Kakadu and Yellow Water, or that part of Kakadu, you're actually closer to the entrance than that. Um, so yes, yeah, so on this morning, um, if we haven't seen the hooded parrot, we spend more time with that, but generally we've got it in the bag by then, and we make our way slowly towards where it says Kakadu and Yellow Water, um, with the idea to do a boat cruise in the afternoon on the Yellow Water. But on the way there, we keep an eye out for birds like this specialty of the northern Australia called the silver-backed butcher bird. Other birds we could see on the way include the very rare red goshawk, sometimes they're nesting. Um, you can see things like bar-breasted honey eater, partridge pigeon, uh, varied lorikeet. So we keep an eye out for those birds as we head north. But by the time it's lunchtime, we've usually checked into our hotel in Coinda. Uh, which is a lodge on the right beside this yellow water area which is a tropical wetland and in the afternoon we go on a boat trip for about two to three hours looking for birds on this wetland and the wetland's full of wetland birds obviously but the wetlands in Kakadu actually boast a bird list of over 60 species so there's quite a lot to be uh, look on the lookout for there obviously wet wetland birds play a big part this is a common bird in the top end the Rajar shell duck this is a classic tropical duck. Uh, wherever you get big lakes with floating vegetation, in the tropical north of Australia, you get green pygmy geese. Much more common and widespread is the Australian pelican. And then we've got the magpie goose. This gathers in numbers of hundreds if not thousands in Kakadu at this time of year, because of course remember we're there in the driest part of the dry season. So these extensive wetlands that still exist in Kakadu at this time of year, drawing birds from miles around. And uh, actually, you should know that the magpie goose isn't a true goose, it's in its own family called the magpie goose. And unlike true geese, it often sits in trees. This is a handsome bird called the pied heron, another bird you won't see on the Eastern Australia trip, but is common here. And then plumed whistling duck. Again, another bird that occurs in hundreds, or if not thousands in Kakadu, uh, in the right spots like this yellow water. And two more classic water birds of Kakadu, comb-crested jacana on the right, which is one with the long toes that creeps around on floating vegetation, so it's often in company with the green pygmy geese I just showed you. And then we have the black neck stork on the left, which is confusingly given the old name in Australia, Jabiru. So a lot of Australian guides will refer to as Jabiru, and confusingly, there is a bird called a jabber in South America, which is another tall uh, stork bird, stork-like bird, which is, um, yeah, is not in Australia. So the jabber is a confusing name, but it is a name they use for this bird, the black neck stork, in Australia. And this is a fairly classic shot of great billed heron. Despite being one of the biggest herons on earth, it's surprisingly tough to see, and it usually puts something between you and it, like it shows here. And uh, the wetland in yellow water is often very good to see brolga. There are two crane species in Australia, and this one's the most likely on this trip, is the brolga. And they actually prefer wetland areas within dry country. So this is very much a, a good area for them in Kakadu. And here's more species that are too scarce and one more common. The azure kingfisher on the bottom left with the orange belly is quite likely on this boat trip, quite common. And then the other two are a bit scarcer. They're regular, they're regular on this boat trip more than anywhere else in Australia. But uh, you still require a bit of luck. The little kingfisher on the top left and the black bittern on the right. They're probably the best way of seeing them this boat trip, but you still need a, a little pinch of luck for that. Here are two more species that you are very likely to see, much more common. You've got the white-bellied seagull there that let us just uh, slowly drift up to us in the boat. And then we've got the Rufus uh, night heron here, otherwise known as Nankeen night heron, 
So we've done a nice boat trip on the yellow water, spend the night of day seven nearby at Kawinda Lodge. And then the morning of day eight, we spend around Kakadu at either Lulangi Rock or Ubia, which are the rock art sites that have good birds in them. And then we journey about three hours back towards Darwin. It's only a three hour drive, but we usually stop on the way at various wetlands as we're leaving Kakadu, and also check out the mangroves around Adelaide River for Mangrove Golden Whistler. So we start the day of day eight around one of the rock art places, one of the sandstone escarpments like Nolangi Rock here. And in the monsoon forest at its base, you can see this bird, the black banded fruit dove, which is very much a specialty of that habitat. Monsoon forest at the base of sandstone escarpments. While on the escarpment itself, you can get sandstone shrike thrush, another specialty, as well as chestnut quilled rock pigeon. And also in the trees at the base of the rock, you can sometimes get the white lined honey eater, which is another specialty there. But of course, we won't, we won't leave there without visiting one of the rock art sites. This is the one at Nulangi Rock, which, which depicts a koala there. And also, I mentioned this just before, this is a chestnut quilled rock pigeon, which is uh, very much a bird of sandstone escarpments. As is this mammal, the short-eared, or eastern short-eared rock wallaby. This was actually pictured at Ubia, so just above it is actually a bunch of rock art. So you could see the wallaby, watch the rock art, get the chestnut quilled rock pigeon all around this sort of famous site. And the other bird we'll be on the lookout for is the partridge pigeon which is very much a sort of a key species in Kakadu. Uh, best look for like the spinifex pigeon by slowly cruising roads and looking on the dirt verges for them. And then our time comes to in Kakadu comes to a close and the tour is very close to a close. So from there we drive back towards Darwin, making a stop in Adelaide River for mangrove birds and particularly for the mangrove golden whistler. And then we spend a bit of time late in the day checking around Darwin. Sometimes rarities have turned up like this rare yellow chat which turned up in Darwin just a year ago and or we just revisit some sites if we have missed the butt the rufous owl or we want to see the chestnut rail or we want to look out for night birds like the owl at night jar barking owl or large tail night jar and so that brings us to the end of the trip so the end of day eight we spend again in Darwin and the morning of day nine if our flights do not get in the way we have some more time to bird around Darwin you never clean up all the birds around Darwin, so always have more time for more birds there. I hope you've enjoyed the trip. I hope you understand that there's a lot of birds here, 50 species or so you can't see in our eastern trip, and so it combines very well with that. But if you don't have a lot of time and you want to do a single trip to Australia, and you're really keen on seeing birds like hooded parrot, purple crown fairy wren, and rainbow pitter, then this is definitely the trip for you.